What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Fellas YouTube channel. My name is Tyler Plath, and we are kicking off Dynasty Fantasy Football content here on the channel by going through our top 15 quarterbacks in Dynasty and ranking them, placing them into tiers. So you know when you are going into your startup drafts, if you decide to start a Dynasty league, which quarterbacks to target, which ones we believe have the best outlook, and just a Quick disclaimer, we are keeping rookies out of this because we do not know landing spots just yet, even though we all know that it feel, you know, we all know that it's going to be Caleb Williams and Drake May and Jaden Daniels that are going to be the top rookie quarterbacks based on just draft capital and all that kind of stuff. But again, we are going through currently the top 15 quarterbacks in dynasty football in before I begin. We are going to be going through running backs and wide receivers and tight ends. We're going to get into these rookie prospects as well, running backs, wide receivers, tight ends, and even quarterbacks as well. So make sure you are subscribed, have that notification bell turned on so you don't miss any of that content as you get prepped for your dynasty leagues. And we're going to start off with the S tier. And there's only one quarterback in this tier. It's Josh Allen. Okay. And, and I will clarify right off the bat, this does not mean that Josh Allen is the best quarterback in the NFL. This is purely just fantasy, looking at fantasy landscape. And the reason why he's the only one in the S tier is because there has been no one like Josh Allen the past four years. Every single year, the last four years, he's put up over 400 total fantasy points. And we look at a year-by-year -year breakdown, nearly 5,000 yards in almost every single season, but one, and it was this past season, and he put up like 4,800 total yards. He puts up over 40 total touchdowns every year between passing touchdowns and rushing touchdowns, and he's passing the ball a crap ton. He's averaging, over the last four years, 591 passing attempts every single year, nearly 5,000 total yards, 43 total touchdowns. The dude is an absolute machine, and there are no other quarterbacks that do what Josh Allen does in fantasy football, right? You have Jalen Hurts and maybe even Lamar Jackson, that can match or or keep pace with his rushing production, but they don't match his passing production. And then you look at like a Patrick Mahomes. He can match his passing production, but he can't really match his rushing production, right? Josh Allen is quite literally the best of all of those quarterbacks into one. And there's, again, there's really no debate about it. Josh Allen will continue to be the centerpiece of this Bills offense, especially with offensive coordinator Joe Brady uh, staying in house. So he, again, the only quarterback in the S tier, Josh Allen, because he's been doing it year in and year out for, for quite a while at this point, we're going to go on to our eight tier quarterbacks now. And the first one that we're, I will discuss Jalen hurts. Uh, he's our consensus quarterback too, as you can kind of tell based on how they are positioned. Uh, Look, Jalen Hurts is the reason why you want a rushing quarterback in fantasy football, right? Three straight double-digit rushing touchdown seasons from him despite not throwing for more than 3,900 yards or more than 23 passing touchdowns in each of those seasons. And Hurts was really the only other quarterback that had the potential to reach this S tier because of his outlook, right? In Dynasty, right? You're looking at longevity. You're not looking for, you're not completely looking at the immediate. While that is still important, you are also playing the long game and looking down the road. Jalen Hurts' outlook is phenomenal, right? Brian Johnson is out as offensive coordinator. Kellen Moore is in. He still has elite weapons in A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. Still has an elite offensive line as well. And the things that we need to watch for moving forward, and the reason why he's probably still in this A tier, are these three things. One, what does the league do with the tush push? Okay, Jalen Hurts has scored an outrageous amount of rushing touchdowns from the tush push. So what, what does the league do? Do they ban it? Because if they do, then there's a bit of a drop off then in the, in the rushing production then from that point forward, right? Second thing, does Philly bring in a more viable number three wide receiver, right? Not your Olamide Zacchaeus's, not your Quez Watkins, a, a bona fide viable receiving option in that wide receiver three role behind AJ Brown, Devo uh, behind Devontae Smith. If that happens, that's even more weapons at his disposal to make the offense even better. And the third thing, what happens to DeAndre Swift, who is a pending free agent? 
and, and you could also then ask, what does the backfield look like going into next season, right? If there is not a legit, you know, superstar stud running back in that backfield, Jalen Hurts is going to continue being the guy in the red zone when they get to the goal line to rush for touchdowns. So if everything falls in his favor, we could be talking about him in the S tier next year. Can't really say that about these next two guys, though. I, I at least I believe, and I, you know, this this could be a debate, you know, in the comments. So let me know. But Patrick Mahomes probably is no longer going to be in S tier, and and that sounds crazy. But when I say like S tier to A tier, we're talking about elite to like top three, right? Like that. That like I should say like this: S tier is the quarterback one, A tier is then the top three, or uh, quarterbacks with the potential to reach the top three. That's that's essentially what it is. And again, this is fantasy. This is not actual because I think a lot of people, especially after the Super Bowl, would say that Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league, bar none, hands down, right? But here's the reason why Patrick Mahomes is in the A tier, right? It was a very disappointing 2023 season, right? Career lows in passing yards and touchdowns since 2019, a career high in interceptions in zero rushing touchdowns, despite the highest amount of rushing attempts he's had in his career, right? Now, all of that may sound like, wow, that would, yeah, like, should he be lower? Absolutely not, because there is still a ton of hope for Mahomes, right? Because one, it's Patrick freaking Mahomes, right? It's still Patrick Mahomes. You're not going to doubt or bet against Patrick Mahomes. And especially with Andy Reid as his play caller, offensive coach, head coach, all that stuff. Second, the end of the season run that he had with the offense to not only make the run to the Super Bowl, but then win it uh, shows that really there this, this offense is going to continue being good, right? There is maybe some setbacks in the row or in the future, but we just saw that this past year and look how well they finished out, right? Like, there is not a whole lot that we can really nitpick here about this offense. They're going to be better. They're going to improve going into next year, especially when you've got a second year Rasheed Rice. You still have Travis Kelsey, and you're probably going to bring in another wide receiver as well, right? And he's still only 28 years old. Okay. Like, look, Patrick Mahomes, he dealt with a lot of uh, unfortunate circumstances this past season, but winning the Super Bowl and playing as well as they did in the playoffs gives me some very, very high hopes, gives me a lot of optimism that Patrick Mahomes should return to that elite or that, that you know, top three quarterback range because that's where he probably belongs, right? Now the, uh, the third guy in this tier, Lamar Jackson. Look, your 2024 MVP, and it was a very different season than his 2019 MVP season, right? Lamar had a career high in completions and passing attempts and passing yards and only five, uh, five rushing touchdowns. And you may hear that and go like, oh, that should be higher for Lamar Jackson. Here's the thing. Lamar Jackson, his career high in rushing touchdowns is only like seven, right? So like we're right in the in the range of, of you know, the what you should expect for rushing touchdowns from Lamar Jackson. And we know that Lamar is good for at least 700 rushing yards. He's hit that every single year. He's been in the league in somewhere between four and seven rushing touchdowns. But Todd Monken unlocked something in this offense that really brought out Lamar's strengths in the passing game. So we can still expect the rushing production, but we're also going to get quality contribution and production from his passing game as well. And I just want to recklessly speculate here for a second with Lamar. This is the state of their backfield going into next season. J.K. Dobbins, he is a free agent coming off a of torn Achilles and has his injury history. Gus Edwards is also a free agent. His contract automatically voids this coming Monday. So two running backs are already hitting the free agent pool. You have Justice Hill, who still has one year left on his deal. But the team can free up almost $2.5 million in cap space by releasing him. So... Don't be surprised if he's a cap casualty in some ways as they may look to sign other free agents. And then you've got Keaton Mitchell who had it, who, who suffered a full tour, uh, a full ACL tear uh, 
and he, he just had his procedure at the end of December. So nine months from then is September ish. And he's, he's not going to be hundred percent right away because that is what we see in running backs and wide receivers. They are just not hundred percent right away. So look, does, does Lamar kind of have an uptick in, in rushing production next year, just because they're going to need him to contribute a little bit more in the rushing game. I, I would not be surprised if that happens. So, Look, your top four quarterbacks are probably the stud quarterbacks that you expected. Now we're going to move on to the B tier where these are where, you know, we start having some questions or things that we need to be aware of, you know, at, starting next season at least. And maybe the, the questions are answered down the road, but at least in terms of just right now, there are just things that we need to be in the know of, starting with Joe Burrow, right? Burrow was someone that we thought could make the jump into that A tier of quarterbacks last season. And I think that 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 can happen again this year. Um, but in terms of just what happened last year, right, he picked up the calf strain in, in training camp and it really caused a lot of uh, inconsistent and poor performances for his standard uh, in the beginning of the season. And then he got into a bit of a groove and then he tore a ligament in his wrist and then he had to miss the rest of the season. So, Look, like you can put any of these quarterbacks, Joe Burrow, CJ Stroud, Justin Herbert, Anthony Richardson in any order in this tier. Uh, but he's the first name on the list because obviously we got him as a, a top five quarterback in dynasty football, but he's he should be 100 percent healthy next season. And Jamar Chase is still his primary target. He still got him in the offense uh, and, and Joe Burrow is still only 27 years old. OK, so. To be fully transparent, though, these are the things that we need to be aware of. Question marks that at least I have. You could ask Cameron and Lucas, and they ha may say differently, but this is at least for me. We have no idea how he'll perform coming off the injury. He could be 100% healthy, but at least just for this season, how much does it take to get back into uh, uh, the get back into the speed and the game of Joe Burrow that we've known him to have? Before his injury, right? Offensive coordinator Brian Callahan, he's now in Tennessee, and his new offensive coordinator is Dan Pitcher, who was his quarterback's coach. Uh, so that's it was the most logical thing to do. But the thing is, it's not exactly a guarantee that it just kind of picks up right where it left off. I mean, we just saw what happened in Philly. Shane Steichen, offensive coordinator, leaves for a head coaching job. Quarterback's coach, Brian Johnson, gets promoted. There's a very, very big difference in that offense. So that's something to be aware of as well. And then who knows what happens to T Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Both are free agents. T Higgins is pretty much primed to get the franchise tag. But here's the thing. There may be a team that wants to pay up for a guy like T Higgins to elevate their young quarterback and take their offense to another level. Like the Houston Texans. And it's a very, very convenient transition then into CJ Stroud, who's the next guy in the tier. But look, CJ Stroud is the real deal. And everything in this Texans offense really, uh, you know, it, it came together in a, in a very good and very big way. It, it transformed their team from being a two win team to a uh, division winner to winning a playoff game. Um, and there were some very, very, po uh, very positive fantasy performances and results for guys like CJ Stroud, like Nico Collins, like Tank Dell before he got hurt and Dalton Schultz. The thing we had to recognize, though, with CJ Stroud is that this offense may not be as efficient as they were in 2023. They were top 10 in past DVOA, which is just efficiency and measuring efficiency. They had a lot of success on chunk plays. He uh, CJ Stroud. Had an elite 99.3 PFF grade on deep throws of 20 yards or more. That is really unheard of, at least for me. I don't think I've seen a rookie quarterback have that elite of a grade in their first season. 58% of Stroud's passing yards came from passes of 10 yards or more downfield. The Those intermediate to deep throws. 58% of his passing yards, of his total passing yards came from those type of plays. And he was third in yards per attempt and second in air yards per attempt. So look, there's nothing wrong with any of those stats. And then if anything, that should give you reason to be excited. 
The point that I want to make, though, is that I believe it's just going to be hard to repeat that kind of efficiency uh, if you don't add anything to the offense, right? So that's why you potentially go out and, and, and go trade for a T Higgins if he doesn't want to go back to Cincinnati and wants to truly become a wide receiver one somewhere. It would make sense. If you don't add to the offense, it's just going to become very stagnant, very stale. Teams will get used to, I should say this, teams are already going to get used to your offense, right? So going and getting a playmaker like T Higgins only benefits, right? He's going into the second year of his NFL career, second year with Bobby Slowick as his offensive coordinator. So look, this offense is still going to be very good. It may not be to the same level of efficiency as we just saw in 2023, but this offense will still be a very, very good unit. And CJ Stroud will definitely put up fantasy points for you. Justin Herbert is next, and here's his situation right now. New head coach in Jim Harbaugh, new offensive coordinator in Greg Roman, a free agent and an aging running back in Austin Eckler. He has an aging Keenan Allen, Mike Williams coming off a torn ACL, and both of those guys give the Chargers around $20 million or more in cap savings if they release them. Uh, Quentin Johnson coming off of a very underwhelming rookie season and Josh Palmer. And I'll throw in Gerald Everett too. That's the state of his weapons. That's the state of his supporting cast. So why, how is he in the B tier still? This is where keeping the dynasty mindset comes into play because you may not have great success with Justin Herbert this year, but down the road, knowing his talent and the fact that he is still just, he's going to be 26 years old when the season starts. You're getting a young quarterback with a lot of talent. You look long-term, you play the long game with a guy like Justin Herbert. Um, and again, I, I do want to recognize it's not the most ideal situation for Justin Herbert. But you, the, the, Herbert is someone that you take a chance on because of talent, because of age, and what should be an offense that improves down the road, right? As they, because they are hitting a, a bit of a rebuild. So look, Justin Herbert, still very young, still very promising. He's going to give you fancy production because of his talent. May not be what you want in year one, year two, year three, maybe even year four. If your leagues go that long, he will start turning it positive performances for you. And the last guy in the beats here as we speed things up so we don't keep you too long here, Anthony Richardson. Electric start to the season, two top five finishes in the first three games and could have been three if he didn't leave one of those games with a concussion. Um, he's going into year two. Shane Steichen as his play caller, head coach, Jonathan Taylor, uh, more than likely Michael Pittman Jr., who is a free agent, but he's probably going to get tagged as well. You've got Josh Downs and a really good offensive line. So the ceiling is still there for Anthony Richardson to be very productive. You just got to hope that the injuries don't become a trend because that's ultimately what could keep him from being an elite fantasy option, right? If he continues to deal with these injuries, right, he's coming off of an AC joint injury. So look, if he stays healthy, he's going to be great. He's got the talent. He's got the skills. He just needs to stay healthy. All right, we're going to move on to the C-tier quarterback, starting with Kyler Murray. The, and I should clarify, these C-tier quarterbacks, they are borderline exciting when you think NFL quarterback, but they are just solid players and have a very solid situation when it comes to fantasy football. And Kyler Murray, look, he's the guy in Arizona, and they are rolling with him. Um. Before getting hurt in 2022, Kyler was good for 3,700 passing yards, somewhere in the 20s for passing touchdowns, and he was rushing the ball a, a decent amount. He had at least 80 rushing attempts, and he was adding touchdowns along the way. And the the reason why he's in the C tier and maybe maybe a little higher than you would expect is just because he's 26 years old. Arizona should be getting better on offense as they continue to rebuild. He's in contention of getting Marvin Harrison Jr. You add Maserati Marv into that offense, good things will happen. So, again, maybe not so much uh, what you want right now, but in the long term, he could pay off for you. Uh, Jordan Love is next, and I think a lot of people might look at him and go like, well, why is he quarterback five in 2023? So why, why is he not in the beats here? And I completely understand those. 
I think this really comes down to just maybe some doubt that we still have about Jordan Love. Can he put it back? You know, can he build upon last year? Can he do this for a second season? And I think the the potential is there. Um, but putting him into the beats here means that you're putting a significant investment into Jordan Love with your startup drafts and all that kind of stuff. Um but Jordan Love, if he plays like he did this past year, in the, and I should say in the later half of the season, where he's protecting the football and he's being very smart with the ball, he could find himself in the higher tiers down the road. It, it's just a matter of, are you going to take the risk on him? I think most of us would, um, but he's not the one that you're going to build your fantasy team around, if that makes sense. Uh, Dak Prescott is next, and he had an awesome fantasy season. Uh Quarterback three finish, I believe, 4,500 passing yards, 36 touchdowns to just nine interceptions. And math says that that is a four to one ratio. That's pretty good. Um, Look, there's not much to talk about when it comes to Dak because we know what he is for fantasy, right? When he's healthy, he's going to put up yards. He's going to throw a lot of touchdowns. You know, last three seasons when he's played a full season, he's averaged 4,600 passing yards and 34 passing touchdowns. Again, we know what he is, and the reason why he's in the seats here is just he's going into his age 31 season, so this is probably as good as it gets uh, when it comes to fantasy for Dak Prescott, and there's just minimal rushing production. You sprinkle in a touchdown here or there, but he just lacks the upside that you see in a guy like an Anthony Richardson, a guy like Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, heck, even all throwing Kyler Murray because they can, they offer a little bit more rushing than Dak does, but thing is if he's going to continue being this efficient and this good he's a great quarterback to have again it's just a matter of he's 31 and some of these other guys we're talking about are 23 24 25 and 26 the last guy in the seats here is trevor lawrence and lawrence is similar to joe burrow in the sense that there was you know an expectation that he takes a step forward and could find you know he could have found himself in a higher tier um but he actually did the like complete opposite. Like it was, it was a very, very weird and disappointing season for Trevor Lawrence. He had less passing yards, less passing touchdowns than he did in 2022. And he had more interceptions. And the biggest thing for Lawrence, we all know he has the potential, right? We all know that his ceiling is still very, very high, but he's got to stop putting the ball in danger, right? Fourth in danger plays fourth and in interceptable passes. 26 turnover worthy plays according to PFF, which ties his career high and was the most of any quarterback we're talking about today. So look, dynasty football for, for Trevor Lawrence, he's still on the younger side. You know, the potential is still there. He is maybe just not the sure thing that we all hoped he would become at this point. So if you're able to grab Trevor Lawrence and then maybe grab a, a, a veteran quarterback like a Kirk Cousins, right? Or an Aaron Rodgers, where you know you're going to get points from them and you can at least not take on the full risk of Trevor Lawrence right away in your in your dynasty leagues. All righty, on to the D tier now. We're going to keep this one short and sweet too, so we don't keep you too long. But Justin Fields is the first quarterback in the D tier. And, <clears throat> excuse me, Fields is just the wild card. Of, of this list, right? No one knows where, where he's going to be next year. Does he stay in Chicago? Is he traded? If so, where to Pittsburgh, Vegas, Atlanta, New England, Denver, heck, maybe Tennessee wants to move on from Will Levis that Brian Callahan just wants a new quarterback. The giants, if they are ready to move on from Daniel Jones, which doesn't sound likely, but you never know Washington, who knows? Here's what we do know, though. Justin Fields is a developing passer with big, big rushing contributions and rushing upside and only 25 years old, right? So, look, could Justin Fields be in the C tier? I think he absolutely could, but there is still a bit of a risk. Maybe, yes, we saw developments in the passing game, but maybe those stall a bit. Maybe he's not as great of a passer no matter where else he or where else he goes. Um, so look, he, he's again, wild card. Justin Fields is what is the wild card. And you may have to invest a pretty hefty price tag because he is so young with rushing upside. Um, 
is it worth it? It depends. It depends on how your draft goes and stuff like that. But look, Justin Fields, young quarterback rushing upside. There is still some intrigue. There is most definitely some intrigue with Justin Fields. Uh, next is Brock Purdy, uh, the game manager himself. Look, he's going to put up points in, in fantasy points because he gets you yards and he gets you passing touchdowns. Like it, it doesn't matter how pretty it is. He's just going to put up fantasy points because that's what he's asked to do, right? He's asked to play point guard in that offense. He does a pretty good job at it. I mean, the quarterback six this past season. So it may sound off and weird that he's in the D tier. It doesn't necessarily mean that we think he's going to fail or anything. It's, it's just a matter of we recognize the limitations to his game and the upside that he has in fantasy football. There's minimal rushing upside, and he's, look, there's nothing wrong in admitting this. He's he's propped up by his supporting cast. Brock Purdy is not as good of a quarterback if he doesn't have Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, Christian, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, and the offensive line that he has. There's nothing wrong in admitting that. But if his supporting cast misses time for whatever reason, let's say Christian McCaffrey gets hurt, or you're, you know, you're you've got a couple games without George Kittle and Debo Samuel, Brock Purdy will not contribute the same way that he does, <clears throat> excuse me again, uh, with his uh, with a fully healthy supporting cast. So this offense, one of the best units in the league, and Purdy will put up points when everyone's healthy. There is just limitations to his game. And that is a okay. You're just only going to get points for yards and touchdowns. And the last guy is Tua Tagovailoa. And I'll keep this one short and sweet as well. Um, he's just like Brock Purdy, but he's just a little more reliant on the big plays. Plays point guard for Miami. And in mo it works in most cases. He's just not the dynamic fantasy quarterback that you can get with a Anthony Richardson or, you know, some of these up and coming quarterbacks. Can he be productive and fancy? He absolutely can. He's just consistently going to be in this low end quarterback one to high end quarterback two range. So he may not be the most reliable, but he, again, he is still very young in a high flying offense. That's worth at least considering in your dynasty drafts and stuff. So again, in a high flying offense in young age, like Brock Purdy, and uh, or I, I should say, like Brock Purdy, uh, there are things to like about both of those guys. But you, you just have to admit that the upside is relatively capped because you're only going to get points just from passing yards and touchdowns. That'll do it for this video for our top 15 dynasty quarterbacks and placing them into tiers. As you can see, Josh Allen in the S tier. Hurts, Mahomes, Lamar in the A tier, Burrow, Stroud, Herbert, Richardson in the B tier, Kyler, Jordan Love, Dak, and Trevor Lawrence in the C tier, and then Justin Fields, Brock Purdy, and Tua in the D tier. Thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way here, let us know your thoughts down in the comments, who you agree with, who should be higher, who should be lower. We want to hear it all. Let's, uh, let's have some solid, fun dialogue down in the comments. We will be back with more Dynasty content as the offseason goes on. We got running backs coming tomorrow from Lucas. We're going to go into wide receivers and tight ends next week. So, again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of those. We will get into rookie content shortly. I promise you we are getting there. We will be doing mock drafts as well on this channel. So, again, all things football this offseason, this is your place. So make sure you're subscribed and have that notification bell turned on so you know whenever we post. And again, we will be back tomorrow with more Dynasty content. So until then, deuces.